Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome back to the Hexagonal Microservice Tutorial Series. In the last video, we set up our serializers and our repository. And in this video, we'll go ahead and finish off our microservice by setting up our API. Let's go ahead and create the API layer using an HTTP library. And I'm going to use this library here called GoChi. And this is kind of similar to the Gorilla Mux library, except it's literally just middleware and a router. So it allows us to generate a bunch of routes and then also put some middleware on the routes. So inside of a folder called API and inside of a file called HTTP.go, I'm going to make some imports here. So IO, IO util, log, net, HTTP. Then I'm going to bring in go chi and then our errors package. And then I'm going to bring in our serialization packages. So the serializer JSON and serializer message pack. And then I'm also going to bring in our domain logic, which is just our shortener library. Now for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to create a redirect handler interface. And this interface is just going to help us create the methods that we want for our HTTP layer. And along with the interface, I'll create a handler struct, which will contain the redirect service, which is just our shortener service. Let's go ahead and create a function here called new handler, which will take in our redirect service and then pass back a redirect handler. And of course, this is the redirect handler interface, not the handler struct, but we're going to implement this interface on our handler struct so we can just pass back a handler struct with our redirect service inside of it. Then because we have two serialization types, we need to set up the response headers. So when we send back a response, if we're using JSON, then we want to send back a response header that says that we're using JSON. And if we're using message pack, then we need to tell the browser or the client, whatever is reading this, that we're using message pack. We'll create a function here called setup response. This will take in the response writer, the content type string, the body, which will be a slice of bytes, and then the status code. And we can go ahead and call w.header.set content type, and then pass in the content type. And then we can call w.writeHeader, pass in the status code, and then call w.write, and then pass in the body. And if we get back an error, then we can just log println error. And again, because we're using two serialization types, we want to create a function which will make it easier for us to deal with the different content types. So we can go ahead here and just take in the content type string and then pass back our redirect serializer interface. And we'll just say if content type equals application X message pack, then we'll pass back a message pack redirect type. Otherwise, we'll pass back a JSON redirect type. All right, so now let's go ahead and create our get and post methods. So get is just going to allow the user to call a get request, and then post is going to allow the user to call a post request. The get request is just going to redirect to the URL that's being stored inside of the database, and then the post request is going to allow us to create a code which we can use to then redirect to that URL. Remember, the code is coming in through the path, so we can get it from chi.url param, and we can look for code, and then this will give us the code. Then we can go ahead and call handler redirect service find and pass in our code. And if we get back an error, then we want to check to see if the error's cause was shortener error redirect not found, and if it was, then we can pass back that we got an HTTP status text of status not found. Otherwise, we'll pass back the error and we'll pass back a status internal server error. Then finally, if we didn't get an error, then we'll go ahead and just call HTTP redirect and we'll then pass in our HTTP response writer and our HTTP request and then we'll pass in the redirect URL and then we'll call HTTP status moved permanently to move along to the redirect URL. Now let's deal with post. And with post, we're going to be working with either JSON or our message pack message type. So we can go ahead and get the content type from our header, request header get content type. Then we want to go ahead and get our request body and convert it into a slice of bytes. So we can just use IOUtil read all on r.body. 
If we get back an error, then we want to pass back HTTP status internal server error. Otherwise, we'll continue and we'll call handler.serializer with our content type. And then we want to decode the request body bytes into the proper message type. Again, we'll go ahead and handle the error. So if we have an error, we'll pass back a status internal server error. Then we want to go ahead and call on our redirect service and call the store function so that we can put our redirect into our database. And again, we want to handle these errors. So if we have an error and if the error is shortener error redirect invalid, then we can pass back an HTTP status bad request. Otherwise, we'll pass back a status internal server error. Then finally, because we want to display a JSON representation of our new redirect with the created it and the code inside of it back to the user from this post call, we can go ahead and call h.serializer with the content type. So if it's JSON, we'll serialize it into JSON. And if it's message pack, we'll serialize it into message pack. And then we'll call encode on our redirect. And this will give us back another slice of bytes, which will be our new response body. And again, we want to handle an error. So this will be a status internal server error again. And if we don't have an error, then we can go ahead and just call setup response, pass in the writer, the content type, the response body, and then HTTP status created. And this will give us back the JSON or the message pack message so that we know what the new code is so that we can call to our redirect. Alrighty, so now we're finished our API, we're finished our repositories, we're finished our serializers, and of course we're finished our service. We can go ahead and come into our package main and tie everything together so that we can run this microservice. Now for our application, we're going to use environment variables rather than command line flags to allow us to set up our port and to allow us to set up what type of database we want to use for our microservice. So first let's set up the port. So I'm going to create here a function called HTTP port, which will pass back a string. And by default, we'll have a port of 8,000 and we'll check to see if the port environment variable has been set. And if it has been set, then we'll take that and put it into our port and then we'll pass the port back and we'll format it by putting it inside of a string. Just like with the port, we want to make it so that we can choose the proper database. So I'll create a function here called choose repo, and this will pass back a redirect repository. And what we'll do is we'll just check to see if we have an environment variable called URL DB, and we'll check to see whether or not that is Redis or Mongo. So if it's Redis, then we want to look for an environment variable called Redis URL. And if we have Redis URL, then we can go ahead and call RR new Redis repository with that Redis URL inside of it, and then return the repo back. And with Mongo, Mongo is going to need three different environment variables, Mongo URL, MongoDB, and then Mongo timeout. And again, we can use these three different values inside of our new Mongo repository to create a new Mongo client and then we can return that repo. And then finally, if none of these apply, then we'll just return nil. Now let's go ahead and set up our main function. So first we'll call choose repo to see which repo we're going to use. Then we can set up the service by calling shortener renew redirect service and putting in our repo. And then we can set up our handler by passing our service in. So h.newhandler and then passing in service. Then we can spin up our router by calling chi.newrouter, and we can add a bunch of middleware. So let's go ahead and add the request ID, the real IP, the logger, and the recoverer. All of these middlewares help us see where our requests are coming from and what is happening with our service. Then we can set up our two routes. So we want to have a get method on our code route. So this is just on root code. And then we have a post method on the root. And we can connect these to handler.get and handler.post. Then finally, we want to create a channel of errors with a buffer of two and create two go routines 
One will go ahead and run our server by using listen and serve and calling our HTTP port to put the port in and then putting in our router, which is R. And then the other one will listen for any kind of exit notification that we create on the keyboard. So if we hit like control C or something like that, then it will get that value and it will then notify the system that it wants to quit. And then finally, we want to drain our errors channel. So we can go ahead and just print that out and we can just say terminated with a string and all that stuff. All right, so now let's go into our terminal and we'll start with Redis as our database. And we wanna set up the Redis URL. And I'm just gonna use the default Redis URL, which is just localhost 6379. And we can go ahead and run our application. You can see it comes back and says that we're listening on port 8000. If I open up Postman, I can go ahead and call a post on our localhost 8000 and I can pass in some JSON here and I'm just going to pass in the URL and I've got a URL that is connected to my GitHub tab repositories. And if this succeeds, you can see here that we get back our code, we get back the URL and then we get back the created at timestamp. We can now open up Mozilla and pass in localhost 8000 followed by the code and it should redirect to that GitHub URL. And as you can see, it did in fact do that. So here we are on my repositories page. Now, if we come back into our command line, you can see here that we did have two different requests that happened and it shows us a bunch of information about each of these requests. So we had a post request and then we had a get request and both of these succeeded. Now let's go ahead and see if MongoDB works. So we want to set up the Mongo URL and I'm just going to pass in the Mongo URL to the shortener database. We'll set up the Mongo timeout and I'm going to put in 30 seconds and then we'll set up the database name, which is just shortener. And then we'll set the database type to Mongo. And now I can go back into Postman, put in a new URL and then pass it in and get a new code. So here I put in the GitHub for GoChi and we get back this code. And this should then redirect to that GitHub page. And it does indeed work. But this time our database is now being stored inside of MongoDB. Unfortunately, there's no way for us to test the message pack protocol using something like Postman or our browser. So we're going to have to go ahead and create a tool to test it out. I'll create a new folder here called tool and inside of it, I'm going to create a file called messagepack.go. Inside of this folder, we want to create a tool that we can run at the same time that we're running our microservice, which will allow us to input some data, take that data, serialize it into message pack, then post it to our API, wait for the response, and then print it out to our console. So first let's bring in some imports. We're going to need all of these libraries. The two notable ones will be the message pack library and then of course our service. And the only reason why I'm bringing in our service is so that we can use the redirect struct to organize our data. I'm going to go and steal this function from our main.go file because this is the way that we set up the port inside of our application and we can just reuse it in this case. Now we could very easily make it so that we can input data into this tool using our command line, but I'm just going to hard code some data in here and have it be sent into our API as message pack format. So first I wanna create our address. So it's just localhost plus our port and we can just call HTTP port. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a redirect and then put a URL inside of that redirect. And here's the URL that we're gonna use and we're going to serialize to message pack. Let's go ahead and actually do that. So we just call message pack Marshall and then pass in our redirect and then this will give us back a body which is just a slice of bytes with the representation of our data structure. And now that we have the body, we can go ahead and just call HTTP post on our address with the content type of application X message pack. And we want to take the body and put it inside of a buffer. And of course we'll handle the error. And then we also want to defer closing the response body. To read the response, we'll go ahead and use IOUtil read all on our response body and this will give us back an error and our body. And we can go ahead and of course log the error if we have it. Otherwise we can take the body, 
call message pack on Marshall on it and unmarshal it back into our redirect and then print it out to our console. Let's just go ahead and rerun our microservice and I'm going to run it with Redis. And then we can go ahead and run our little tool here and you can see that we get back our code, the URL, and then the timestamp. And of course, if we come over to our API, we can see that a post request was made on localhost 8000 and it was completed. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to click the notification bell. Have a good night.